Welcome back to Kizaka Stockfell Insights, where we explore the world of Stockfeld and burial societies. Before the break, we touched on the advantages and disadvantages for Stockfell groups opting for the short-term investing approach only and spending all of their savings for December with my resident guest expert, Tabiso Masurubele. Uh, Tabiso, you know, when before the break, we were just talking about how Stockfall groups would need to start being more honest and transparent in terms of their constitutions, goals, and if that goal changes, and then everyone being in a unified sense in a way so that they can make these changes. What are the implications of you now having a new goal, for instance, on your monthly premiums? So, so there are a couple of things that then would need to happen. So as a group, as you correctly say, you'd have to get together as a group and honestly and robustly engaged to say, guys, are we all on the same page with regards to this objective that we've identified for ourselves? And it's at that important point where people who are still interested in short-term gains would then raise their hands and say, listen, if you guys are considering a, a situation where we're not going to withdraw our money at the end of the year, I'll look for another group. That helps in a sense because you need to have a group of people that agree on a common goal, which is a fundamental principle of what a stock fell is. So what would then happen? That would be the first part, agreeing on that objective. And then everything that you do thereafter would then have to align with that particular objective. So if you say it's growth, you then define targets for yourself. You say, how, how, what does this growth look like? How do we define this growth? Growth means different things to different people. So within our context, what does this growth mean? It means uh, we want to have assets. We want every member of the group should own a house without a bond, uh, as an example. So if that's your end objective for everyone to own that, you then look at what the resources required would be. And more often than not, it might necessitate that you have a relook at your premiums uh, such that they now need to grow because your objective uh, the size of your objective needs to also, you know, talk to the size of your premium. So if you then realize that we can't afford, uh, you know, this particular premium, say to build a house or to have an asset would need a thousand rand a month, for instance, and then the group says, but we can't afford a thousand rand a month, you then have to review that goal and say, right, if we can't do it, one of two things, either we increase the premium or we increase the period of time. Uh, over which we expect the return. So, so there are different things that you then have to look at, but all of these things are informed and driven by that initial objective that you have. And it's, it's very important for people to succinctly define what the growth would be. So you need to be very specific so that there's no doubt where someone thinks growth is, you know, interest from a bank or someone thinks growth is me having excess money at the end of the year. You have to be very, very you know, explicit to say the growth as defined by our group means X, Y, Z, and this is the goal that we're working towards. And that's actually quite interesting there when you mentioned about just the concept of or how groups define growth. I mean, there was a research conducted by Mbali Gwabanda in 2019. Funny enough, we just spoke about <laughs> how there research. isn't enough research. Mm. But here, when she was <coughs> interviewing different stock files in different provinces, she noticed that, you know, a lot of them had a distrust when it comes to the formal financial markets and that kept them from participating and interest rates from banks actually came up as well. So can you just touch on that, on, on, on how can Stockfells overcome you know, that barrier and actually try to participate in the markets? I think it's a two-way street. I think absolutely uh, the, the, the thinking is very correct that there's a huge trust deficit between stockfills and financial service providers and what the so-called formal market. Uh, and that's largely because you, some, thi some things that you don't know, it's very difficult to trust them, especially when it comes to money. So a lot of individuals and groups have had their fingers burnt uh, with a couple of financial institutions. There have been some cases in the recent past where you know people have been paying premiums and their claims haven't been honored. For, and there might be legitimate reasons why those things happen, but perception is a big thing. So you have this perception that, you know, from Stockfells that we year in, year out, month in, month out, we give our money to these, you know, corporates. Uh, but really the value that we're getting isn't sufficient. So I think what needs to happen is that the corporate sector needs to get closer to the groups 
and not necessarily view them only as numbers and as revenue. But I think as we were talking about the research, it's getting down to the group to understand beyond the premiums that they contribute every month, but to understand the psyche behind these groups. So that as we go away as corporate uh, entities and we develop these products, these products should really talk to the needs of the group. So I think a lot of the time when products are developed, products are developed coldly, for lack of a better word, based purely just on numbers where people see what the potential is from a number point of view, and it becomes an actuarial process to say, you know, if these are the numbers, and if these are the numbers, this is what we should do, and so on, which is fine. But I think we need to dig deeper and say, right, what informs this? So that the products have, you know, a lot of areas that create value for the groups, and also this thing of trust. Where once people know who they are giving their money to, uh, it becomes easier for people to part with their money and the trust element improves over time. So now you have people engaging with financial service providers and they really don't know who they're giving their money to. All they have to rely on are the ads that they see on TV and the fact that this is a big brand and so on and so on. But you counter that with the fact that that very big brand did not honor a claim or did not, you know, is perceived not to have done what they had promised to do you then have this huge trust deficit that develops where stockfellers then say, wait a minute, maybe we don't want to take our money there. We'd rather keep it here where we see it, yeah, which is also not a good thing. It, it almost sounds a as if, you know, the banks, corporate sector, and you have stockfellers, it's yin and yang. Mm. Like, you also have issues of distrust here in stockfellers, mm. but you also have distrust here in the formal financial sector as well. Please do stay with us. We will be back shortly after this break. Are you a member of a stockfell or burial society? We at Thai Vision Media specialize in helping stockfells and burial societies. Contact us for professional stockfell and burial society administration, access to investments and funeral cover experts, and credible financial information. We will help your stockfell and burial society to achieve your goals and grow. Contact us today.